I think I will leave. There are lots of examples which you can actually read from the Zabosli, but I will leave this to go to the next topic, which we are discussing was the size consistency. In fact, we just said in the last class that if I have H4 dimer, artifact separates correctly, but when I do BCI, it does not. Okay. So, a better level of calculation apparently worsens the quality of the levels, right. So, I will try to come, come to that. So, let me first do H2 model. Can you write the correlation energy expression first H2? Okay. So, what is the matrix for the correlation energy? Can we write quickly? 0. Okay. Let us also take simplify the problem. H2 molecule in two bases. This is a question that I had asked. Okay. One molecular orbital, let us say I call it 1. Another molecular orbital I call. So, what is my Hartree Fock? My Hartree Fock is when these two electrons are in the orbital one, right? And what is double CI? I just put this here. Okay. So, your wave function phi, let us say exact wave function, is 1 1 bar, let me write it explicitly, plus C 2 2 bar. Do you agree? And both of them are actually spin adapted singlet. Okay. If I take a single excited determinant, then of course I have to make sure that they are singlet. So this is doubly excited singlet. So if I want only that, this is almost like a full C. Exact wave. So it doesn't matter. I am talking of BCI now. So this is my phi DC. I hope the nomenclature is clear. So first one is 1 1 bar. Then second one is two. So, 1 and 2 are spatial orbitals. When I am writing 1 in the determinant, it automatically makes 1 alpha. 1 bar is 1 beta. Because determinant cannot be written in terms of spatial orbitals. Please remember. So, when I am writing 1 inside the determinant for a web function, this cannot be a spatial orbital. So, the default notation is the spin is attached to this spatial orbital and that spin is alpha. If I write bar, it is B. I hope you will remember this is a very standard notation that is used. So, my C i web function becomes 1 1 bar and 2. So, I have this as the hard default and then doubly excited configuration is this. So, this is my 2 2 bar this is my one. and of course, there is a coefficient. So, now let me write down the C i equation. So, the first term is h minus B e hard default. So, the first term uh, by definition is 0, right. We have psi Hartree Fock, h psi Hartree Fock minus e Hartree Fock, so that is 0. The second term is psi Hartree Fock with psi doubly excited. There is only one term. So, that means I need to find out the determinant 1 1 bar h 2 2 bar. What is the result of this determinant? By Slater rule, you can anti symmetrize 1 1 bar. 2 2 bar. Correct. So, so you write you expand this in terms of spin orbitals and then show that only one term survives. Okay. So, that is what? 1 1 2 2. Right. Because when I do the spin integration, now these are all in special orbitals. I do the spin integration, it is survived. So, this, what is this term? This is called the electron 1 here, electron 1 here, electron 2 here, electron 2 here. So, this is actually an exchange integral. This is not a Coulomb integral, it looks like 1, 1, 2, 2, but in Dirac notation. In Mullikan notation, it will be 1, 2, 1, 2. So, this is actually an exchange integral between the two spatial orbitals. What would be the Coulomb integral? 1, 2, 1, 2. But this is 1, 1, 2, 2, and the exchange term of this becomes 0 because of spin integral. I hope all of you can see that because it will become 1, 1 bar, 2, 2 bar, that will give this 1, 1 bar, 2 bar, 2, minus 1, 1 bar, 2 bar, 2 will give you 0 because the spins are appropriate. Okay. 
So, I have only one integral and that is an exchange integral between two special objects. I call it k12. So, this value is k12, this value is k12, and then you have a determinant, you have a matrix element between 2 to bar h minus e hat to power 2 to bar. I hope all of you again can use letter root, yes. Which one? This one? Why it is called exchange integral? What is 1 1 2 2? Let us see 1 1 2. It is phi 1 star. Let us say 1 is phi 1 molecular orbital, okay. Phi 1 star 1, phi 1 star 2, 1 by r 1 2, phi 2 star, phi 2 of 1, phi 2 of 1, beta 1, beta 1. So, is it not exchange integral? What is the Coulomb integral? When there is a charge density, one electron is sitting on one orbital, another electron is sitting on another orbital and interact. Here you see the electron 1, here is sitting on phi 1 star 1, phi 1 star, here it is on phi 2, right. So, that is not density. Uh, after that I get Exchange term is 0. Don't. Yeah, special orbital exchange means that. That Coulomb, what is a Coulomb density? If a, yeah, if an electron is sitting on phi, phi i, 1, electron 2 is sitting on phi j, then that then inter interaction to the density is called Coulomb. Here it is exactly opposite. So, the electron 1 is sitting in phi i square. Here it is phi 2. So, please do not confuse with that exchange. That is an exchange for this integral in terms of spin orbit. After spin integration, I get an integral only in terms of space orbital. This by definition it is an exchange integral. The Coulomb integral means electron 1 has to sit on orbital 1, electron 2 has to sit on orbital 2. But if you look at here, electron 1 is sitting not on orbital 1, this side on 1, this side on 2. That is exactly what is the Coulomb integral. Is. Exchange integral is right. So, if you I, I just want to again tell you what is exchange integral in the Hartree Fock itself, we have done it. So, what is Coulomb integral between two special orbitals J, A, B? Let us say A, B is the two orbit. So, this will be phi A star 1, phi B star 2, 1 by R1, right, and then this should be again phi A1. I B 2 beta. This is the definition of Coulomb integral. How I will write the notation is comes later. The Coulomb integrals means the density of elect one electron is in phi A, phi A star phi A, interacting with phi B star phi A. Correct? You agree, Rishabh? Huh? Now, question is how do I write it? I direct notation. That is a later part. So, when I write it, this becomes A B A B. That is Coulomb. When I write the exchange, then the same integral will become phi a star 1, phi b star 2, 1 by r 1 2 and this will interchange. So, this will now become phi a phi b 1, phi a beta 1, right. This will become exchange. Now, if I use Dirac notation, this is A B B A. Okay. So then you have the you have, you have the notation that this is. So here it is like this that you have one integral on one one, another you know two. Okay. So this is why it is called exchange integral, and I'm calling it K K A B. So the, by the notation itself. If you wanted to have a Coulomb integral, it should be 1, 2, 1, 2. Remember, 1, 2, 2, 1 is same as 1, 1, 2, 2. I, I hope you are not confused. Huh? See, this 1, 1, 2, 2 can again be written as 1, 2, 1, 2, provided there real special object, which is the case for our. So, that is exchange integral. Now, you can see it is an exchange integral. Uh, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 
Five one star, five two star, one standard here. Second and third, one two three. So that is your same integer, ABBA. So I wrote that as ABBA, and you can see that is ABBA. One two two. Okay, it's identical. So I have just written as one one two two. So please see the, please expand this and see physically what it means. So this is K one two. So, anyway, right now it is just a number. The fact why am I calling k is what I am trying to justify, but otherwise it is a number. This quantity, the 2 2 bar, this quantity which will come here is let us let me call this 2 delta. Okay, I can expand this by Slater rule, which actually I gave one problem in the quiz and I defined this as 2 delta. So, this becomes 2 delta. Then you have 1. C equal to E correlation 1 C. Very simple problem. In fact, this is something that I gave in the quiz actually. So, I, you can set up the, the equation for the H2 in a very simple two basis problem. In two basis problem, there is only one WX editor. So, DCI can be very easily solved and this can be actually solved. Absolutely, it can be solved. So, write down E correlation as K12 times C. So, your E correlation becomes K12 times C, right? So, that is your correlation energy. And then the next is K12 plus 2 delta C equal to E correlation C. This is something that we have done it already before. Very similar expression we are doing. So, then you write, so K12 into 1 plus 2 delta into C equal to E correlation C. Put the C on both sides, so solve for C and substitute it. Okay. So you have uh, E correlation minus 2 delta C. Sorry, E correlation minus 2 delta C equal to K1. K1. So then you sub substitute for C, very simple algebra, substitute for C equal to E correlation minus 2 delta inverse into K1, okay. so 1 by this, actually it is a number, all this case is simply a number and then substitute here, so your E correlation is K12 times C which is K12 square divided by E correlation minus 2, right. I hope all of you can see this. So, it is a K12 C, C already has a K12. So, it is K12 square divided by this. And now you can see, I told you what uh, initially that we have to use the iterative method. So, you can see for DCI, you use the iterative method, remember. So, you first put E correlation equal to 0, get a new value of E correlation, put it back here and keep doing. That is a Davidson's kind of routine. So, we have the correlation energy in terms of correlation. So, of course, you can so solve it iteratively. You, I could have completely diagonalized this matrix and got it, Jacobi householder, but I did not want to do it. I wanted to show you the iterative procedure. So, this is your correlation energy. You can get a root from here. This is very trivial because you can just write a quadratic equation. There is only one number, E correlation into E correlation minus 2 delta equal to K1 to square. You solve it. So, quadratic equation, take the lowest root. I hope all of you will be able to solve this. Give me the actual correlation energy for the lowest root. Again, I have a two problem, two basis problem, so I will get two roots. One ground state, another first excitation. And because it is a linear variation, each of these roots will be an upper bound. Remember again, McDonald's theorem. Okay, I am of course interested in the lowest root. So, if I ask you to find the lowest root, you should be able to find from here. Now, let me switch to the next problem, which is dimer of H2. H2 dimer. So, the problem is the following that I have two hydrogen molecules which are separated infinitely apart. So, that is my problem, right. So, what are my orbitals to start with? 
each of the hydrogen molecule is sitting on one, I call it hydrogen molecule A, hydrogen molecule B. So, I have two spatial orbitals, one hydrogen A, hydrogen B to start with. So, what is the Hartree-Fock of this? Two electrons here, two electrons here, right? Remember, these are the monomer orbitals, but when I have separated it, the orbitals remain the same because there is no interaction between these two hydrogens. And I told you that the Hartree-Fock energy is also sum of these two energies. So, Hartree-Fock separates completely. Then I have 2A and 2B. Again, they are same as the monomer 1 and 2. I have to write A and B separately because their coordinates are different, the two hydrogen molecules far apart. So, now I have to construct the DCI wave function. So, for two things, one is DCI for H2, another is DCI for H2 diamond. Let me explain the problem because I cannot finish it today. DCI for H2 diamond, right. Then I will have to show that the E DCI for H2 dimer is not the summation of E DCI of hydrogen two times, right. What I will try to show in the next class is that the double CI for hydrogen dimer will not be the double CI two times double CI for hydrogen even when they are far apart. So, this is infinitely apart, the distance is into 2 H2 molecules. So, these are basically non interacting H2 molecules. So, two hydrogen molecules H2 dimer non interacting. And remember the interaction the, the channel in which I am breaking is H2 plus H2. So, normally what I would expect? I would expect the energy to be sum of the two hydrogen molecules. But what I will show is that if I do a DCI now on this system, my energy will not be the sum. What is also important is that the DCI wave function of H2 dimer of H4 will also not be a product of the DCI wave function of the hydrogen times the hydrogen. Of course, there will be anti symmetric product, but either way, this will not be a problem because you know the non interacting theorem that for a non interacting case, the energy should be sum, the wave function should be product. So, what I will show is that if I do a DCI for the H4, which breaks into H2 plus H2, that means two H2s are far apart, neither the wave function will be product nor the energy will be sum. Whereas, if you do Hartree-Fock alone, the energy was sum, the wave function was product. So, the this particular aspect of correct separation of wave function and energy and a, at a non interacting regime is called size consistency. So, what is size consistency? So, size consistency essentially means that if a super system, I call it a super system, system of 2 H2 molecules, and I call generally super system PD, fragments into A plus B at a non interacting that is when whatever you call it R A B tends to infinity, the distance between the two fragments goes to infinity, then the energy of A B should be sum E A plus E B and the wave function A B should be an anti symmetrized product of A. This is called the anti symmetrized product. Because anti symmetrized product, because the overall wave function must be anti symmetrized. This a capital A is just an anti symmetrizer operator. So, do not worry about it, but essentially everything has to be anti symmetrized, not simple product. So, an anti symmetrized product. So, this this property is called size consistency. If this happens, size consistency often it is called also size 
se parece. Clearly, by this, by this discussion, if I can show this, it would mean that the DCI is not size consistent. So, all theories which satisfy this are called size consistent theory. This is the property of size consistency. The theories which satisfy this are called size consistent theories. So, clearly, I, I, I will propose that DCI is not a size consistent. Once I am able to show this. I just want to tell you the final result and we will see. Remember the monomer of DCI we have already done today. So, I can easily show. So, I have got the DCI for H2. Please remember this. This is the result. Of course, you can take the quadratic equation and solve it. I mean, I will just give the result. I will directly go to DCI for H2 time. And similarly, I will calculate correlation energy at this distance when R between H2 and H2 is infinity. There will be lot of simplifications and then I will see that the correlation energy that I get will not be twice the correlation energy. So, that is mathematically I will first show. Then I will argue physically why it happens. I think that is more important. Why is DCI not size consistent? What is wrong? And that is important to understand physically because then only you will be able to correct. But the next level of theory we should be able to correct. And I will also show that the perturbation theory that we did, MP2, is actually size consistent. So, CI is not, DCI is not, but MP2 was good, okay? except that MP2 does not recover all of good, good amount of energy, but it is good and DCI is not good. However, you remember an approximation of DCI was MP2, but then that is an approximation. So, an approx that approximation, the 2, 3 approximation that we did, would be size consistent, but not the not the actual double size. Okay. All right. So tomorrow I'll start from here, and uh, please follow this because unless I'm I'm sorry that some of you did not take the quiz. Well, actually, this was one of the problems that I asked in the quiz. I just I just set up the problem and asked them to solve. So one of the reason is that I'm going to come to this, so, and this is also the in the line with the iterative method that we did. In a very simple, simple 2 by 2 problem. Double CI where there is only one double X array configuration. So the problem can be very easily solved mathematically. Okay. And uh, of course, this is exactly solvable. I do not have to solve iteratively. What I am trying to show you here, this is exact solution because it is a quadratic equation. So I can exactly solve it. I am not going to do iteratively, but you can do iteratively. Taking e correlation equal to 0, then next e correlation is this minus 2 delta, then put it here, keep doing it. But in this case, you do not need to do it because this is only one number, I can solve it by quadratic equation. Analytically, I can solve it. So that is what I am going to use. I could have also solved same thing by actual diagonalization of 2 by 2. That is same as this. Because if you diagonalize, what do you do? You do minus lambda, minus lambda, you get a quadratic equation. Do you remember diagonalization method? Simple diagonalization method, not even Jacobi householder, by Kramer's rule, you get a lambda square, and that is exactly this. So, that is exactly this quadratic equation that we are hinting. So, anyway, uh, either way, it would have been the same result. So, we will come come back uh, to this problem, a very instructive problem, and this is where much of the physics of the quantum chemistry methods actually lie. Okay. Then we will go back to MP2 and then. Then at the end we will go to couple cluster, but in between I want to do little bit of second quantization and diagram. Let us see how much I can do. At least the rules, just the rules of diagram, it should be simple read. Alright.